Hi Iggy. Today I'm going to be quickly going through an important topic that crops up in most GCSE uh, exams regardless of where you are in the world. Um, okay, so I'm going to quickly cover moles, mass and molar mass and then I'm going to move on to an example that uses all three and the equation I've got here on the board. Okay, so a mole is a common unit that's used in chemistry and it helps to describe the amount of a substance in a sensible way. Okay, um, if we did it um, talking about how many actual molecules we had in a reaction, we'd be talking about millions and millions and that wouldn't make much sense. So what we can do is moles, and, and moles is um, very easy to calculate. All you need to do is take the mass of your substance and divide it by the molar mass of that substance. So for example, you could work out the number of moles um, of water. So if you had um, 18 grams of water, you would divide that by the molar mass of water, which is 18, so you would have one mole of water. So if I jot that down for you, so we're working out moles of water. Okay, so we know, um, I told you we have 18 grams, which is also 18 millilitres or centimetre cubed, okay? Those units are all analogous for water, okay? So we have 18 grams, and we know that the molecular mass, okay, MR, it might not be MR for your exam board, um, but that's what I was taught all those years ago. Um, so the MR of water will be uh, 2 times 1 for the two hydrogens, plus 16 for the water, okay, uh, for the oxygen, sorry, and that will give you 18. So then to work out the moles, it's very simply uh, 18 over 18, which gives you 1 mole. Okay, um, so now you can get 18 centimetre cubed of water and say that is one mole of water. Okay, uh, now a simple way to, to memorise this equation okay, is with an, a formula triangle. Okay, so you can write in here, you can put N, you can put the moles in there, the mass on top, and the molecular mass in that bottom right corner. Okay, and so now using this, it's very easy to rearrange this equation. So it, if you're trying to calculate the, the number of moles, N, cover that up, and it will be mass divided by molar mass. Um, if you wanted to calculate the mass, you cover that one, and it would be the moles times the molar mass. And then finally, if you wanted to calculate the, mole the molar mass, you would cover that up and do the mass divided by the number of moles. Okay, so that's the moles, the mass, and the molar mass. Uh, now on to an example that uses those three things. Okay, so here we have an example that I took straight out of an, uh, I believe it was an AQA exam paper, um, but it crops up in, in all other examples. So, what mass of sodium sulfate is made when 20 grams of sodium hydroxide is reacted with sulfuric acid? So first of all, we have an equation that we need to balance. So balancing the equation is a very important skill, and more than likely you'll be asked to do it in your exam. So, first of all, we need to check what things we've got and, and balance it up. So we know on this side of the equation, we have two sodiums. So that would mean over on this side, we would need to have two sodium hydroxide so that we've got two of these to balance the two of those. Yeah, because in balancing the equation, we need the same number of atoms on this side as we do on this side. So doing that then, um, we now need to balance the water. So on this side, we have one, two oxygens from sodium hydroxide and four oxygens from the sulfuric acid. So that means we have six in total. So on this side, we need to have six as well. So that would mean we'd have four there, and we need two here, and that makes six. So to double check that, we go back through, we count the hydrogens, um, just to double check ourselves that everything balanced. Okay, so for this sodium hydroxide, we have one, two, and then for H2SO4, we have two again. So that means we have four hydrogens, and if we double check on this side, we've got just the water providing hydrogen, so that's two times two gives us four. So that's all balanced. So now on to the actual question. Uh, we need to calculate what mass of sodium sulfate is produced when we use 20 grams of sodium hydroxide. So the first port of call is to calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So we can do that very easily. We can take 23. Um, these numbers are provided by the mass number in your periodic table. But we have 23 plus the oxygen, 16, plus the hydrogen, 1, and that gives us 40. 
Okay? So the MR of NaOH of sodium hydroxide is 40. Now we need to work out the moles. Okay? So using our equation over there, we know that moles is mass over molar mass. Okay? So we know the mass is 20 grams. That's provided by the question. So we have 20. And we need to divide that by the molar mass, which we've just calculated, which is 40. Okay? So 20 divided by 40, that gives you 1 over 2, or 0 0.5 moles. Okay? So, you might think at this point, so we don't have enough information to calculate Na2SO4. Uh, we can calculate the mole mass, but we don't have the number of moles um, in order to finish our equation. Um, but this is where a bit of thinking comes in. So, we know that we are using two lots of sodium hydroxide to give one lot of um, sodium sulfate. Okay? So if we have 0.5 moles here, yeah, and this is 2, we have half that amount of sodium sulfate. So we can say then that the moles of sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, equals half of this, 0 0.5 divided by 2. Yeah, because this is 1 and this is 2. So that gives us 0 0.25 moles. Okay, so now we've got the moles. We need to calculate the molar mass. So we've got MR of Na2SO4. Um, and that will be nice and long. So we've got 2 times 23 plus sulfur, which is 32 plus 4 times 16 for the 4 oxygens. Okay? And if we add all that up, that should come to 142. Okay, so now we can calculate the mass very easily. We can just look at our triangle. We need mass. It's N times MR. Yeah? Moles times the molar mass. So that then equals 0.25 times 142, which should give us 35.5 grams of sodium sulfate.